But people, I know a lot of you Christians. <laughs> a lot of you Christians that call yourself by Jesus' name when you say Christian. When you say Christian, you know what you're saying. You're saying, I am part of the body of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what you say when you say you're a Christian. Now, by saying that, it's got to start showing. It goes for me and everybody else. All right, like I was, my boss, he's not really Christian. His family member is not really Christian. But I remember uh, last week when we came back from work, when we came back from work and he said Friday, they, they went to a church, not to serve God, but to indulge in trunk or tree. Now, now keep in mind, they don't go to church. Mm -hmm. They don't, they never. Mm -hmm. But they went to church on this day because it was about candy and treats. <laughs> it's not about serving the Lord. Oh, we ain't gonna do it on the 31st. Huh. What difference does it make? You're doing it. <laughs> oh, we ain't gonna do it on the same, we're gonna do it the same night, but we're not gonna call it Halloween. Oh, oh really? God said, don't serve me how, you, how the heathen serve their gods. That's what he said. That's what I, I read, I don't know what you read. <laughs> you understand? So right now, I'm presenting you with a choice. A choice that God presented to all his people. That he constantly presents to all his people. Choose now whom you may serve. You're going to serve the most high God. You're going to serve their gods. You know, think the Native Americans, right? You know, uh, I hate what happened. I hate what happened to any nation that turned their backs on God. I hate what happens. Mm. I hate what happens to any person that turns their back on God. Mm. I hate that it happens, but it does. Mm. Why? Because it is written. You think the Aztecs ain't here for a reason? For no reason? They ain't here because they didn't serve God. You think the Egyptians crumbled because they were good people? Mm. You think that if they gods couldn't defeat God now, I mean then, what makes you think they can defeat God now for all you people that are trying to go back to Egypt and worship these deities? Mm -hmm. Worship the Egyptian ways. We were we were born from kings. We sure was. We were. We were born from the king of kings. You understand? Not the kings of the earth. Mm -hmm. Not the deities of the earth. But God. God said, I made the heavens and the earth. I made the stars and the sky. And you worship the stars. You follow after astrology, mm -hmm. which God has made and knows all of them by name. But you're not following after God. You're following after horoscopes, stargazers, astrologers, science. It seems innocent to you, don't it? It just candy, just treats. No, it's a trick. It's called trick or treat. So look at the two choices they give you. Trick or treat. That right there is deceptive. He said, by bribe, a man is brought to something. I can't remember. Brought low, something like that. That's what trick or treat is, a bribe from the devil. You let him trick you. And then he treats you to some candy. Is your soul worth a handful of candy? Is your whole soul worth 20 pieces of silver? <laughs> what is your soul worth? A lot more than a bribe. A lot more than a costume. You understand? I'm not saying all dress up is bad, but it's better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. But look around. I was talking about the Native Americans people. You know, one thing you to realize that God never wiped any civilization out without leaving a remnant. Even the ones that don't follow God, besides Sodom and Gomorrah, as a sign for all those that shall choose to live ungodly, that He can. He wiped Sodom and Gomorrah completely out. 
and let some, some people around that I'm sure it was a remnant left. Some people who was gone on a long journey away from Sodom and come back to find their home and utterly destruction, uninhabitable. Mm. Think about Egypt, it's still Egyptians today, mm. right? He left a remnant for them to make a choice. Mm. Aztecs, he left a remnant of them to make a choice. Native Americans, he left a remnant of them to make a choice. <laughs> but some of the Native Americans, they still follow their pagan ways. Or if they do follow their pagan ways, I mean, God, they still include their pagan ways with God's practices. You can't do that. You got to go make a choice. That's like if I was a Buddhist and I transform into a Christian. And I keep some of the Buddhist ways. Mm -hmm. How can I say I'm true with God? How can I say I serve the most high God? If I continue to choose and be do the ways that goes against his ways and his covenant and his statutes and his judgments. How can I call myself a child of God? How can you call yourself a child of God when you continue to, to worship these false Holidays, <laughs> you know, in the Old Testament, God gives us examples of every holiday, uh, how to, to observe it. If this world was such a revival, why aren't these instituted into America? Not just America, overseas too, everywhere. Why aren't they on the calendar? Why aren't they presenting themselves? Mm -hmm. But they're not on the calendar. Unless you buy your special calendar. You should look it up for yourself. Me and my uh, a few of my co-workers was talking. We're like, how did we start to put God's ways back in? How do we really truly do revival? And if God wills it, I was like, well, you know what I'm, I'm going to start doing if God wills it. I'm going to find out his days. I'm going to mark them on the calendar. Even if I got to start observing his holy days one day at a time. For the different holidays he got until I get it right. That's my goal for next year if God wills it. To mark my calendar. So I can stop focusing on the world's holidays. And focus on God's holy days. His Sabbath day. His ways. Don't commit fornication. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't covet. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't worship other gods. The list goes on. You know, there are certain things that God does, did do away with. Think about the sacrificial part. So you probably, you still can observe the holy days without the sacrifice. All you got to do is eat now. Think about that. Look at God's holy days involve eating, drinking, and being merry, and reading the word of God. That's so easy. Mm, if you really think about it. And the thing is, people, if you are reading and eating and drinking and being merry and observing God's statutes, you are already on the right path because even you may not know how to observe God's holy days, but they are in your heart because you are doing them on a daily basis. So even if you're not doing it, you are doing it because it's in your heart because you're doing it on a daily basis. Except the Sabbath, of course. The Sabbath was set apart. And the Bible constantly tells us to honor his Sabbath day. The Pope can't change the Sabbath day to Sunday. Sunday's still the first day of the week. It's not the Sabbath day of the week. What's the use of observing Sunday worship and not Sabbath day worship? And praise and ways. I'm not telling you nothing that you shouldn't already know. You understand what I'm saying? I'm thinking, nothing that you shouldn't already know. Everything I'm telling you is in there. If you believe it. If you receive it. It's there. You really think God wakes me up every morning to spread this word for nothing? I'm doing this because I love him. I'm doing it because it's part of my purpose. And I'm doing it because I want to reach as many souls as I can. Because God said, it's not my good pleasure that any man should perish, that all should come to eternal life. That all might be saved. You see that might, that all might be saved. But the Bible says, all of us not going to be. 
It's fun. Choose now, people. You got four days. What are you going to do? You might have kids. You might have loved ones that invited you to Halloween parties. You might got kids that you made promise you. Yeah, I'm going to take the trick-or-treating this year. Would you rather break a promise to your kids or break a promise to God? Mm -hmm. That seems like an easy choice. Now think about Eli. He chose his kids over God. A lot of y'all are choosing your kids over God when you celebrate Christmas. A lot of y'all are choosing your kids over God when you celebrate Halloween. A lot of y'all are choosing your kids over God when you indulge in Easter by planting Easter eggs and the Easter bunny. <laughs> That has nothing to do with God. A lot of y'all are choosing your kids. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Choose now. But the thing is, if you call yourself a Christian, you already chose. So he's going to hold you accountable. Now he already said the people who rejected God, they already condemned. They already judged. Until they come to accept God. You see, we have a, a chance when we accept God. One thing about it, he'll chastise us. Sometimes chastisement is this. Hawking to his voice and going through the pain of not doing what he tell you not to do. That hurts. It's chastisement. Telling your kids, no, I know I said, I know I made a promise to you that Halloween you're going to have a great time but God came into my heart today and showed me the error of my ways and I got to tell you because if I mislead you God's going to hold me accountable for that <laughs> do you understand people I try my best not to worship or indulge in a lot of these false holy days I try my best so far, I've been doing pretty good, and I'm sure a lot of you have been doing pretty good with it, too. Pat yourself on the back, because God is patting you on the back, too. He's proud of you, mm -hmm. because you're not going with the flow of the world. Mm -hmm. He's so proud of you. Few and many. Which are you? Are you part of the few crowd that said, forget it? Are you part of the many in the broad crowd? Going the wrong way. Can't discern from your left hand to your right hand. What are you going to do? Choose now. You got four days to start the process. Or keep the process going. One thing you're going to realize about revival and renewal. Is when you read the Bible. Every time God wants to institute a change in the world. Guess what he start doing? He have somebody... With a purpose. Nehemiah. Ruth. Ezra. Hey, I got a mission for you. I need you to do this. And after you do that, I need you to read my words to the people. And tell them my ways. Because I'm writing them on your heart for a reason. So you can tell everybody else the truth. The world has been lying to you for years. Ever since elementary school, they teach us about Thanksgiving, and they don't even tell the truth about that. They teach us about Christmas, they don't even tell the truth about that. They teach us about Halloween, they don't even tell the truth about that. They teach us about Valentine's Day, they don't tell the truth about that. They teach us about Easter, they don't tell us the truth about that. They just tell, give you a coloring book, and here go some eggs, and here go an Easter bunny. They don't tell you what it's all about, they don't tell you what it means. They've been lying to us for years. Yet, I can't tell you with a, like I know the truth, like every last holiday is evil. I can't tell you that. You know, like some people try to say, well, celebrating your birthday is evil. I can't see that. I can't see that. Even I done studied it and tried to, that's a day. That's a day you was born. You want to celebrate another year on this earth? Glory be to God. 
It's an actual real day. <laughs> it's not that it's a day for you to worship yourself either. It's a day for you to encourage yourself that God has gave me another year on this earth. You see, if you look at things from this perspective, you got a day for every year to honor, to not honor someone else, or to look after someone else, to give them something, a gift. Everybody in your family has a birthday. Think about that. Or you can just do it whenever you feel like it. You want to buy somebody something, buy it. If you want to show somebody you love them, buy them a box of candy right now. Buy them some flowers now. Watch the day. It's called today. Why wait to tomorrow when tomorrow is not promised to us all? You know, I'm not overflowing with money, and I know a lot of y'all aren't either. And I remember growing up, I, I used to get in debt. When Christmas time came, I put bills on hold just to celebrate one day. But I'm learning. Tomorrow's not promised, and constant flow of income ain't promised. That's one thing I know. So if I got it now, and if you got it now, how about do it now? Do it today. Why wait? You see, if you start doing what God asks you to do on a regular basis, you don't even have to worry about none of them days allotted to be nice. <laughs> they say Christmas is the season for giving. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a secret. Every day is a day for giving, and for giving, for giving one another. Every day is not a special day set aside to give. What are you gonna do? You know. And I know the world is orchestrated. They give you off days for these days. Enjoy these off days, but you don't have to indulge in these off days. You don't have to do what they say do. Take it. But don't indulge in it. You don't have to be a part of it. You see, the devil wants, if he can, if he can get you to sin for three hours, that's a battle one for him. But if God can get you to resist for three hours, that's a win for the kingdom <laughs> and for the kingdom people. <laughs> what are you going to do? I know a lot of y'all going to Halloween parties tonight at the club. Dress up. <laughs> like New Year's celebration. Do I consider that evil? I don't know. I'm still learning. It's officially a new year. Another year you made it through. But it's at the same time, you don't have to be out there in the streets partying and hardening and drunkenness. You don't have to do that. You can have a few drinks, but you ain't got to be drunken just to celebrate. What if you die on New Year's drunken? What if you die on New Year's in an act of fornication? What if you die on New Year's doing something you ought not to do? And that goes for every day in reality. What if Jesus returns when you're out there in the streets on New Year's Eve? Staggering drunk, and you call yourself a Christian, overindulging on Thanksgiving Day, eating way too much. What are you gonna do? Obviously, you can't do nothing. You won't have time to repent if he tells you today your soul is required of you, and that goes for everybody. But people make the choice. Choose now whom you may serve. Start the process. It's not an easy process. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. You're going to disappoint a lot of people. But let me tell you something that I said earlier. Who you want to disappoint? People or God? Choose now. One thing you don't want to do is disappoint God. God said, I'm angry with the wicked every day. So what make you think? We are any different if you do wickedness. He's angry with you, but he's also merciful and full of grace. You got, if you're still breathing, you can repent. That's all I'm gonna tell you. But tomorrow's not promised to you. The next 20 minutes ain't promised. <laughs> the next three minutes ain't promised. The next 30 seconds, 
I ain't promise. Somebody's finna have a car wreck right now. Mm -hmm. Somebody's finna have a heart attack right now. Somebody's finna have an overdose right now. Somebody's finna commit suicide right now. Somebody in the, in the hospital dying from cancer right now. He's gonna die today. And after they die, whatever you've done, that's it. Whether it be good or bad, that's it. Sleep well. But let's put it this way. If you fall asleep living for the words of the ways, I mean living contrary to the ways of the Lord, when you wake up, that'll be the most horrible nap you're ever going to have when you wake up. You're going to wake up to eternal damnation. Yes, I'm trying to put a little fear in your heart. Because the fear of God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding, the beginning of wisdom. You see, if you read the Old Testament, a lot of people didn't fear and they thought God was playing. They thought God was playing with them. Because he was so merciful and so full of grace. They tried to take advantage of it. He'll let it slide for a while, then he's like, you know what, forget it. Imagine how many years he gave Sodom and Gomorrah to make changes. Imagine how many prophets he sent that way, how many men of God he sent that way to tell them, hey, this ain't the way to go. But they refused. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Most people are like, I don't, I don't go against God. Uh, you rebel against this word, you're going against him. You're going against God. <laughs> I didn't say it. He said it. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ in your life to start the process, I advise you to do so now. And I know a lot of you believe that you have accepted Christ in your hearts and still do contrary to what he says. <laughs> but let me tell you a secret. It doesn't work that way. Now, one thing God can do, now remember this now, he can harden your heart and have you keep doing whatever you think is right in your own mind. And it goes for me and everybody else. And he'll give you over into it. That's a punishment. That you lack discernment to know the difference between good and evil. Discernment, lack of discernment is a punishment from God. Mm -hmm. Have a blessed day.